Welcome to Learn and Love Music. I'm Dwayne Hulbert. Today I'm going to give you six things that I'm grateful for as a pianist. Before we start, I want to encourage all of you to subscribe to our channel, Learn and Love Music. We want to see you back again. So let's look at these six things that I am so grateful for in being a pianist. Number one, I'm thankful for composers. For example, here's a wonderful piece that I found 40 years ago in the Lincoln Center Library in New York, and I fell in love with this piece. And this piece was a work that I played in the Tchaikovsky competition in Russia in 1982. It was sort of a, it's like finding a treasure trove of music. And I love to learn new things, but also I love to learn obscure pieces of music because there's so much to learn, so much to accomplish in working on these pieces and performing these pieces. So I'm grateful for all the composers that I played over the years, whether it be obscure composers like Glazunov or well-known composers like Beethoven and Bach. It's wonderful to have this fabulous library of works for solo piano. I think there are more pieces out there for piano than for any other instrument. So, I give a tribute to all those fabulous composers out there. Number two, I'm grateful for the wonderful pianos that I've been able to play on over the years. I remember when I was a little kid, I was only about maybe 10 or 12 years old, my grandfather uh, gave me a Steinway Grand Piano. It was a, a used one, it was a mahogany a five foot eight piano, and I loved that piano. I had it at home when I was growing up. And then later on, I was able to get some other pianos, including this one, which is a Steinway B, which is a seven foot piano, a perfect piano for this kind of a venue, working in a, a private home. Uh, also, there's one piano that is my favorite, and that is the nine foot Concert Grand made by Steinway. That's in the opportunities that I've had over the years playing in concert. This is the piano that I've worked on the most, the Steinway Grand Piano, especially the nine-foot piano. And why is an instrument so important? It's the tool that we work on as artists. We, would, we need the composers, but we also need the pianos that we can play them on. So what makes a piano like the Steinway great? It has a singing tone. It has a rich variety of colors, whether it be very, very soft, you know. Something like that, like Ravel or Tchaikovsky, the beginning of the piano concerto. Oh. One of the things you'll find about the Steinway piano is its carrying tone. When you play a chord, it lasts for a long time. It's rich. It projects beautifully in a room like this, but with a concert grand, that projection goes out to an audience. It could be even a thousand or fifteen hundred people in the audience. They can hear the quality of the piano sound in the Steinway. And the keys are very, very responsive. It has a wonderful sounding board and it, it's just a great, great piano to work on. Now, every piano is different. And one of the things I've found when I've had to go out and buy a piano or to recommend a piano for a student, every piano is different. And that's what makes the Steinway special. You might be able to find a piano exactly the model, the same model as this. It might have more of a burnished kind of sound, maybe not a big bl blaring kind of sound. A lot of times, having a good technician, too, helps because a piano for this size room, it's just a, a living room in a private home, we don't want to have a huge piano. We want to have a piano that we can work with and have some variety of sound. But when we go to that concert hall, we need to have that power and beauty and just the, the ambiance that this great piano gives us. So I'm thankful for a wonderful instrument. Number three, I'm grateful to my parents who supported me, gave me piano lessons, gave me the opportunity to study piano at a very, very high level. Even when I was a young student uh, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, my father worked as a machinist for an airline. 
My parents were not musicians, but they gave me the opportunity to study music. They didn't have a lot of money, but they put the money into lessons, my weekly lessons. Uh, it was so helpful in the trajectory of my career to have the support from the beginning that came from my parents. Number four, I had great teachers all the way from when I first started lessons with a woman named Mrs. Cressy in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. She knew that I had some talent, considerable talent, and she passed me along to another teacher in Minneapolis, and that was about 25 miles away. I had to take a bus every weekend to, to go to the McPhail School of Music with Gary Sipes, a wonderful teacher, very patient teacher, and I worked with him all the way through my high school years. And then going on to college, it was a little bit of a bumpy ride. I went to a school where I didn't have a very good teacher, and I decided to transfer to the Juilliard School in New York. I started out in the extension division just so I could try to get some piano and also some theory background in my um, studies. But I met this woman named Janine Dowis. I think I've mentioned her before, a wonderful private teacher. And she was the one that prepared me for the audition at the Juilliard School. And it was a, a great, great teacher. Who, and she also worked with me in the Aspen School of Music for several summers, and that prepared me as well. Then going on to Juilliard, I had a wonderful teacher, Mr. Gordonitsky. He was an older man, very famous, and had lots of great students. And it was fabulous to be among these colleagues of mine at the Juilliard School, and with my teacher, Mr. Gordonitsky, who guided me through those years. Going on later, I continued with uh, studying with Janine Dowis as I began my performing career and she prepared me for many of the international competitions that I entered. Some of them I won, some of them were I didn't win, but it was the pathway that these teachers gave me to give me this wonderful career and to be, be able to play such wonderful music over all those years. I'm so grateful for my teachers. Number five, I'm grateful to have a place to practice the piano. Having a place to practice can be hard. I remember when I was in New York, I had a really small apartment for a few months, and the piano barely fit into my bedroom, and I would sleep underneath the piano, but the piano was important to me. Even though I couldn't afford a big apartment, I always made space for that piano that I needed to practice on. And now I'm glad to have a home where I have two pianos at home, two wonderful pianos, and my neighbors don't complain anymore. Uh, th this is very difficult as a pianist because we can't carry an instrument around, we can't move it, it has to be in a stationary place. I'm grateful to all those people who are tolerant of my piano playing over these 50 years or more. And finally, number six, I'm grateful for all the audiences that heard me play over the years. It's so important as a performer to have that support, having your friends come to the concert or people you know, or just people in a particular community. After all, music is a collaboration. It's a collaboration between the performer and the audience. It doesn't matter the size of the audience. It's just that you're able to have people who can appreciate what you put into the music and the joy that the music brings the performer, but also, very important, that the joy it gives the audiences. I've given you six things that I'm grateful for. If you're a musician, let me know what you've been grateful for. Thanks for watching Learn and Love Music. I'm Dwayne Hulbert, and we'll see you next time.